Hey folks, Doc here. This is my handy dandy coffee roaster. It's a Baymore 1600. Uh, you can see it's a drum roaster. It has a chaff collector. And it's got, I believe, quartz heating elements in the back, which you can't see. And it's got handy dandy electronics. Nice little light inside. Um, programs which I mostly don't use. Uh, it roasts quarter, half, and one pound roasts, but since I don't pay much attention to that either, I usually just set it on one pound and do what good coffee roasters do. I listen for first and second crack. Um, but today we're going to do some coffee roasting because I want you to know how to make living coffee so you don't have to depend on survival coffee. So, pursuing good things to eat and drink. Uh, today we're making living coffee. The difference between survival and living is one you get by and the other you enjoy. So, what we need to do is first we decide on what kind of green bean we're going to use. Green coffee beans are like this. I get mine from, oh, I should probably cover that up. Um, I get mine from a, a very good source. Um, I enjoy these people a lot. They've got a great channel. Um, I guess I don't need to cover it up. Maybe they'll get mad at me, maybe they won't. If they get angry, I'll just take the video off. Um, today we're doing a Colombian coffee. Colombia Los Chuchos de Tolima. And uh, there's about 1.2 pounds left in this bag. And what I'm going to do is... It's pretty essential to weigh out um, what you want because there are limitations on the Baymore 1600. And uh, we don't want to come up against those limitations because they I did something wrong there. Uh, the limitations will um, affect the, the outcome of the coffee. So we want to skirt ooh, one bad bean. First time I've ever seen one. Um, we want to skirt those bad that's not bad at all. Uh, those, those limitations so that we can get the coffee we want. Uh, that's about right. That's about half of the bag. So now there's going to be another roughly 0.6 um, pounds left to roast. And we'll see. Yeah, a little under. That's okay. So we're done with that scale. And, um, so there we have our green coffee beans. About 0.6 pounds. It's not exact. It doesn't have to be. So it's in the area of. We take our coffee roaster apart and get the beans into the drum. I see there are some, there's some chaff left over in there that I'm going to have to deal with. Uh-oh. I don't want the green beans to fall out on the floor. Uh, I'm dealing with the camera and this and trying to stay out of the frame. Sometimes accidents happen. Get those pieces of chaff out of there. Uh, one of the reasons that the Baymore has these restrictions on it, these limitations, uh, if you will, is um, they, of course, don't want to have to suffer the liability. This is one of the difficulties of the system. There. Hopefully, that's right. Um, these folks at Baymore, they have to uh, put up with liability uh, because this has a great deal of potential for starting a fire. Uh, it gets very hot inside, and probably the last thing they want is for you to start a fire. So they limit this. Um, it's very difficult to get a very dark roast on your coffee. Yeah. And if you roast one pound, it's essentially impossible to go above what they call a city roast. Um, I like my coffee roasted, most of them, um, at a full city to a full city plus roast. Anything over that, it starts tasting burnt to me. Uh, I think Sumatran coffees hold up pretty well under uh, the darker roasts. But I'm doing a Colombian, and that is essential, or should be a... Uh, lighter roast. So I'm going to select, since we have just over a half pound, I'll select one pound. That gives us 18 minutes 
and uh, it automatically selects uh, the default programs. And all I have to do, apart from putting the light on, is start this thing. And if we're lucky, well, it's starting to roast perfectly. And there it's not. So we'll turn it off and try again. Uh, there is a um, not a problem with the roaster, um, but it seems that um, if you don't set this in there exactly right, you get a little bit of a noisy roast. And really, I don't think it's a problem so much as um, I don't want to cause extra wear and tear on the on the machine. There we go, roasting well. Here you can see a little bit of a closer image of the roaster as it's working. And um, I'll give you a little bit of a, a little bit more detail on the control panel as well. Hopefully you can see this. Um, I'm going to fire the cameraman any second now. Here you have your weights, uh, your program profile, or and your profiles down here, programs, profiles, and you can increase and decrease the time for roasting to a slight degree. Also, if you run into a problem like a fire or something, you can either turn it off or hit it on cool. If you ran into a fire, I would not suggest hitting cool uh, because you're just blowing air into a combustion chamber, and we all know what happens when you put oxygen and fire together. Not a good idea. Um, basically turn it off and unplug it. If you have a fire extinguisher, I would get it ready and um, probably have to sacrifice the old roaster. Okay now, here we are. We're uh, almost 14 minutes into the roast. The first crack has started. I hope you can hear that. And uh, I'm going to try and let you see in the roaster a little bit more. Uh, if you notice, if you can see the color, which I hope you can, uh, the beans have gotten a lot darker now. Ah, that's when I, my guess was that first crack would start, and it's already begun. We'll pan it, get back out, and uh, first crack will roll along. This is where. Uh, steam has developed inside the bean and now it's it's uh, finding its way out and it expands the bean and it um, the cracking sound is essentially the beans expanding and snapping uh, they don't break into little pieces at this point but at the next stage second crack they can now what often happens at this point or somewhere just after first crack ends is all of the smoke detectors in my house begin to go off um, and unfortunately today my youngest daughter is home from school uh, they don't have school today it's uh, November 2nd voting day so I'm sure the teachers are enjoying their rights and responsibility to uh, engage in the democratic process for what that will do for us um, and there they go my, my lovely younger daughter is taking care of the uh, fire hazard, and uh, second crack is starting. The, uh, the funny thing about this is when first crack, now I need to hit cool, because we don't want to go past a full city plus roast. Um, interesting thing is the timing on this is, is about as bad as it can get. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go past uh, full city plus roast by a little bit, but not too bad. It'll still be good coffee. Um, after things quiet down, I'll tell you why the timing is really bad. Hey, Doc here. Just wanted to wrap this up, let you see what the roasted coffee looks like. This is roasted coffee. It is um, dark and delicious and in 
day and a half it will be perfect drink. This is the chaff that this produces when you roast it. This is only a small amount of what was actually there. I vacuumed it up. I figured you guys had put up with enough noise. You didn't need to see me vacuuming out the uh, Baymore and uh, the chafe collector. So I didn't make you see that. Um, wish you could enjoy this coffee with me because it's really good. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a cup of it in a couple days. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the segment. Thanks for watching.